Good morning, Mr. Kudumauto. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Kudumauto is the Consulate General of the Ghana High Commission here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Good morning, and thank you so much for taking our call. Mm -hmm. um, we in the Ghana community, again, we do have lots and lots of questions, some very local to our community here in Canada, and some concerning ourselves in Ghana. Uh, I'm going to start with the very softer side, which is not of the individual political thing. Now, the first is, what do you think about our obsession in Toronto about the events that we attend every Saturday? I think it's a positive issue. Okay. I see it positively because the work of Ghanaians in this country alienate Ghanaians from their kids and kids. That means many Ghanaians don't meet one another in the course of the day. Again, there is what we call, in French, they call it depacement. That is, you are out of your country. And because of the natural interactions that you have in your country, like meeting family, meeting friends, and all those things, you've missed it. In international relations and diplomas and other places. When people are posted out of their natural environment, eh, they are given indemnities for the, uh, the missing of family and everything and all those. Because being isolated from people who you agree with, family you know and others, cause health hazards. You can get depression. Eh? You lose so many things because that is not your natural environment. So here, the meetings that people have over the weekends is in a way revisiting Ghana, your kit and kit in a way because when you meet Ghanaians who you know, you can exchange views language you are here talking foreign languages yes. you cannot understand their languages very well but when you meet somebody and you are a guy yes and you say Egbe, Ejeke, Alo, Oje, Sean, Oje, Sean. you feel so happy absolutely when i somebody meets an account man and i said miss mm -hmm. he feels that the person has spoken his language and he can tell the person everything which i with confidence. Confidence. In the same way, when an every man meets another person, he feels so happy. Right. People, it's positive for people to be outward, going outward. But at the same time, we have to be inward looking, to look at ourselves. Yes, I understand that, but um, when you look at the economic implications, mm -hmm. um, on the average, the average Ghanaian lady in Toronto who attends these events four times a month spends at least six to eight hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That'll be a combination of the new outfit she gets and then the contribution at the gates anytime she or he goes. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there has to be some kind of an addressing to this kind of an issue. Um, do we have to encourage this or do we have to? Tone it down a little bit. Well, I think that there's nothing, there's no price to life. Eh? Yes. If you do that thing and you feel that that will give you your life satisfaction and others, you will pay anything to have it. What is the use of getting all the money and staying at one place yeah. and you die yeah. eh? without interactions and depression? Yeah. You see? Life is paramount. Hmm? Yes. If you get all the whole world money and you sit at your corner, you don't talk to anybody, you will die inside there without people knowing. Absolutely. You see what I mean? That is very true. You have to interact. That is very true. According to some a certain philosopher, it says that he says that to be is to be known. Yes. If you are you known. To be is to be known. Yes. Um, and you are only a human being because you are part of society. 
You see what I mean? I hear you. So if you come and you sit at your corner, collect all the money, and you sit inside and you won't even go out and show solidarity with other people. Mm? Yeah. And you don't show solidarity back home. And all what you are doing is that you will hide it and making money. You will make money, money, money. The authorities of Ontario or the authorities of Canada will also take their money, money, mm -hmm. money out of you. Eh? And at the end of the day, eh? who loses? Who loses? Yeah. That is what I'm saying. So I would say that positively, it is good. The negative, the, f the negative side of it is that if the person feels that he is going there to do showmanship, right. mm, and he is spending much money and others, it is the person, him or herself, who is causing the damage to him. So. But what about those of us who may not have the money and so we'll have to either find other ways and means of making the money, not to look too bad. Well, to why should you go to competition with others? You know, the if reason... Why do you be like the Joneses? No, because if you don't pay at, at this, when it's your turn, they're not going to pay. No. There, you know, you cut your coat according to your size. You have to meet the people. If somebody donates fifty dollars and you can donate twenty dollars you've donated from your heart true according to your means that is what you donated but do you realize that if you go out there and you donate twenty dollars and it's noted down the next time it's your turn the person will come in there and pay twenty dollars only it's if the person to... loves you yeah eh? i think that if this should not be a competition it should be the motive behind the thing is socializing. Mm? The motive behind the meeting is solidarity because we are Ghanaians. The motive behind the thing is that we all share common humanity. And when somebody has lost a family member, we go there to show our solidarity with the person. It's a far away thing. Back home, we have funerals. There are others who go to funeral with the latest dressings, yes. the latest things, but there are others who go there with the very import of sharing the grief of that person. He may not have the best cloth and others, eh? but he will use the decent clothing that he has and go there and, and show solidarity. So the import of going there is more important than the fall. The essence is better than the form. You see, you see, funerals are funerals. Eh? And what about the birthdays? The birthdays are birthdays. You go there, say, culture, Pajay more, Accra, everybody wants to be there. It is not all people who go to Pajay more in Accra or these things, eh? dress heavily or anything. There are some people who just get there to go and drink and yeah, that's if you They won't drink whiskey. But if you give him, kill him quick application, he will take it. Definitely. The very fact that he's come and said that this child, you welcome to the world, we are happy, it's okay. Good. Thank you so much. That is our first point. Now coming back to a much more serious note. Mm -hmm. That is, um, those of us who have been in Canada for some time, or not necessarily Canada, but outside Ghana, and um, still hope to maintain our civil rights mm -hmm. that we do have, Mm. here the same way we do civil rights yeah that we're entitled to in Ghana mm -hmm. now that brings us back to the point of dual citizenship mm -hmm. first of all what is dual citizenship well if I want to say it I would like to quote the Ghana law which makes the dual citizenship yes because in the law they explain what it means a dual citizenship yes uh, at 527, Ghana Parliamentary Act 527, eh, which was signed into law on 16th December 1996, eh, provides in its Article 81 eh, that a citizen of Ghana 
may hold the citizen of any other country in addition to the citizenship of Ghana. That means you are a citizen of Ghana uh -huh. and you hold the citizenship of another country. But not necessarily having the same equal rights in both no, countries. No, 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 no. We don't say equal rights. You have equal rights. If you are a Canadian, you have the rights of Canadian. Yes. If you have rights as a Ghanaian, yes. you have a right as Ghanaian. Okay. But you are rather talking about political rights. Okay, political rights. It limits people in a certain category of political officers. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. In fact, it doesn't, excuse me, it's administrative rights. Administrative. It's not political. Okay. Yeah. Excuse me for saying political okay. rights. Yeah. They say that without prejudice to Article 94 2A of the Constitution, no citizen of Ghana shall qualify to be appointed as a holder of an office specify in the clause, uh, in this clause, if he holds the citizenship of another country in addition to the citizens of Ghana, okay. ambassador or a high commissioner. This is an administrative position, which is the government gives you the position of an ambassador. Okay. Secretary to the cabinet, okay. chief of defense staff, or service chiefs that is in the armed forces armed forces. inspector general of police mm -hmm. commission of customs excise and preventive, preventive service. service director of immigration service and any office specified by an act of parliament you see what i mean that is a little tricky mm -hmm. well, can you elaborate on that the final point any, that is if the parliament of ghana decides today yes that a consul general should not hold dual citizenship, then I have to resign if I have a dual yes, citizenship. Yes. You know, parliament represents the whole of Ghana. Yes. It's the aggregate of Ghana. Yes. That means all Ghanaians have decided that from today onwards, mm -hmm. this office should not be held if you have political, if, if you have dual citizenship. Okay, so as of today, if I'm a Kenyan citizen mm -hmm. and I decide to join the CPP mm -hmm. uh, party in Ghana mm -hmm. and I get a constituency that I can stand, mm -hmm. do you think I can do that and successfully represent? From the offices elaborated here, mm -hmm. because if we go to uh, Article 92, Article 92 is different from this dual citizenship thing. And so okay. let's go to Article 92. Yes. Hmm? Yes. Article 92 of the Constitution. Sorry, it was Article 94. Mm. Okay. It's a qualification for eligibility of Parliament. This is the Parliament of Ghana who says so. Okay. The Constitution, subject to the provision of this article, a person shall not be qualified to be a member of Parliament unless he is a citizen of Ghana, has attained the age of 21 years, and is registered voter. He is a resident in the constituency for which he stands as a candidate for election to parliament or has resided there for a total period of not less than five years out of the 10 years immediately preceding the elections for which he stands or he heals from the constituency. He shall pay all his taxes or make arrangements satisfactory to the appropriate authority for the payment of them. Hmm? A person shall not be qualified to be a member of parliament if he owes allegiance to a country other than Ghana. Meaning, if you do a citizenship, you owe an another allegiance. So you cannot? Yes. Because <laughs> all has been adjudged or otherwise declared bankrupt, has a criminal record, and all those things. Eh? 
this is the requirement for a citizen of mm -hmm. one you shouldn't hold any allegiance to another country so if I am if, if I am became a citizen and I want because to be, you hold allegiance to Canada so okay so if I still insist I want to be a parliamentarian mm -hmm. it means I need to denounce or renounce my citizenship I'm what is the difference that. between those two uh -huh. denouncing and renouncing Denouncing, yeah, to down here and then renounce that. That means you have to renounce means that you've given up, okay. Uh -huh. Denouncing is another thing that means if you denounce somebody, they have done something wrong and you want to expose the person, okay. Right, so you have to say that you have to choose between being a Canadian or a Canadian because we don't want you to have double allegiance. The reason is that. It is of security of implications. Because if you are a parliamentarian, you are being trusted with high quality Ghanaian secrets. It's high classified information. information. That's true. How can you, how can we trust you that when you get out of our country or when you deal with Canadians and others, eh, our trusted information? will not be filtered out to a third country, to your country. Or in a case where there's a clear case of Ghanaians having confidence in you right. and trusted you with huge money, right. trusted you with the position of a finance minister or anything, and you take all the money and you bring it to Canada. Right. Then you jump ship and you come to Canada. Right. We can't pursue you because Canada will say that, look, this is our citizen. Yeah. If he went out somewhere and brought money, well, conveniently, let's enjoy it here. Or the better. Yes. You see what I, I mean? understand. So this, the drafted of the Constitution took into consideration the interest, the protection of the interest of the government of Ghana into consideration before writing this law. So they took very, very serious views about people who may have double allegiance. There can be somebody who is in a country, he hasn't got dual citizenship, but he may have allegiance to somebody, some other country. Yeah. If he is a, a member of parliament and he's an agent for USA, yeah. he's an agent for Canada and others, that means he holds an allegiance. Yes. And so when the government gets to know that this is what the person is, eh? mm -hmm. naturally the person forfeits his position. So the drafted of constitution were mindful of all these pitfalls which will come. That is why they say that people, this political office or all the political office holders are saying that allegiance to a foreign country other than Ghana. Yes. So specifically, they don't debar you from political office. But if you hold a foreign allegiance, this is what is the problem. Have you, have you heard or read of any instances where there are some citizens challenging the legality of this? There are so many challenges which has gone on. If you go to the internet, right. uh, you will find on June 4th, 2012, mm -hmm. an article written by Kwekua Sari mm -hmm. on the Supreme Court's pronouncement on dual citizenship in Ghana. Some people challenged some aspects of the dual citizenship law, and there were pronouncements from the Supreme Court about it. Mm -hmm. You can conveniently go to the net and give you that it was featured on 4th of June, 2012, who the Supreme Court's pronouncements on dual citizenship by Kweku Asari. Mm -hmm. He's written on several issues about eight points where he feels that there were some issues and they needed clarification from that one. Besides that, there are people who lied about their status. Ooh. and when to become parliamentarians. The popular one is one which is still ongoing case in Accra. The man Ooh. stood for elections, 
but he failed to disclose that he had other citizenship apart from God. He used different names also. And it was found out that he didn't only hold Ghana citizenship, but he held Burkina Faso citizenship as well as the citizenship of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. And they all legitimate citizenship or he they were all valid citizens. Okay, valid. Okay. All right. This being the case, a member of the constituency where he stood for went to court and denounced him that this fellow cannot legitimately represent us because he holds British nationality and he holds Burkina Faso's nationality eh? and he claims he's a Ghanaian. The court is still on the case and I don't have to comment on it when the case is before the court. Oh, mm. I see. Okay, um, and then on a, on a different on a different note now, mm. um, a little bit more personal question: mm. uh, Who is your most admirable politician, Kenyan politician? That's a very million dollar question. I'm a political, so I don't have any political. Yeah, I know, but I mean, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there are some of your favorite politicians that you may once in a while give in your speeches. I've listened to you, mm -hmm. you know, giving some really, really powerful speeches whereby, you know, you may use one or two as an example, you know, mm -hmm. that because you just not necessarily uh, support the political party that they affiliated themselves with, but also mm -hmm. their way of thinking, their philosophies, you know, mm -hmm. there has to be one mm -hmm. or two that, yeah, that you admire. Uh, uh, I'm very political and on this particular issue, yeah. I don't think that I have any favorite Ghanaian politician who... Not are, even Kwame Nkrumah? Oh, Kwame Nkrumah is the father of the nation. I'm not talking about the current... Uh, uh -huh. No, I'm talking about even through history. Through history, Kwame Nkrumah is very impressive. Yeah, it's coming. Are you ready? Yes. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, did something. Me, 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 channel like that. Channel like that. Ah, why you know? Me, me, here again to you. Finish that. Yeah. Kwame Nkrumah is a phenomenal politician. Right. Because he's a product of not only Ghana. The international revolution of decolonization hmm? yeah. and the fight against imperialism. Of course, I should be fascinated by Kwame Nkrumah because I'm a child of colonialism yeah. who has suffered from the vestiges of colonialism, and imperialism, yeah. and neocolonialism. So, any fighter who fights against these things, which has impoverished Africa, naturally, I'll be part of, I'll support him. So I think his views about fighting imperialism, neocolonialism, colonialism, and his human rights, as well as civil rights for all Africans, he is one of the best politicians that can ever have. Yeah, but he's my favorite politician mm. as well. Yeah. Um, and then on a the very final note, mm. what should we in Ghana, uh, what should we Ghanaians in Toronto rem remember you by after you leave Toronto? When we don't know, but what <laughs> what would you like us to remember you? That, by? That's a very serious question to. I'll leave it to the Ghanaians themselves, because the one who is making the war, there's a proverb in Ashanti. We say that the ultra son, William Senechia's chair, the one who is fighting the war, yeah. doesn't know that it there are some people who he couldn't shoot down. Right. If the person wakes up and shoots him from behind, eh, yes. then he hasn't won the war. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that the war is not over. It's not over. <laughs> I leave it to posterity. Okay, okay, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to insist. So far, mm -hmm. 
you know, not till you finish your term, but so far. Yeah. So far? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm very humble, man. I think that leave it to posterity to decide. Because if I have, I claim I've done this, that, that, that thing. Mm -hmm. There are critics behind. Every, you should be mindful of critics. Yeah, but critics are good. No, yes, they are good. That's yeah. why you are being... The yeah. in, Yes, they are, they are, you should be mindful of critics. Mm -hmm. What I will consider as my achievement will be something which is nothing. Leave posterity to decide. Yes, yeah, that is whatever I do in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some people who congratulate themselves and uh, do all this. Thing. I'm not the type. Let somebody congratulate you. That's my point. Okay. Um, His Excellency Honorable Mr. Kujo Mauto, mm -hmm. thank you so much for having the time to talk to us. Yes. And then at least explaining mm -hmm. the dual citizenship issue yes. and then your personal issue yes, yes. on the Ghanaians in Toronto. Yes. And again, thank you so much from Koko mm -hmm. Ghana in Toronto. Thank yes. you so much, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Because the law is clear that you are, if you are a dual citizen, yeah. <laughs>